Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel, all you Cody hackers. Um, and of course, all you new subscribers. Thank you for stopping in. Um, I haven't put up a video in a couple weeks, and the reason why is I've just been busy, busy, busy with, um, well, I'll show you in a bit. But uh, the weather finally looks like it broke a little bit, at least for the next few days. And uh, in addition to putting a new, or not a new, but a replacement rear end in my 2003 Cody Bastro Van 2. Um, that took up quite a bit of my time. It was one of those jobs, you know, you start at it, you know, can't be that hard. Wrong. It was that hard. Um, you know, up here where I'm at, rainy, yucky, the slop you drive through in the winter, the mud, the yuck, on a 20-year-old something van, you know, it it makes the nuts and bolts a little crusty, rusty, don't you know? So, but I got it done. Um, it is in there. And I got it in there. I'm still waiting on the uh, rear brake lines to come in. They're the rubber kind. There's a passenger, a center, and a driver's side. I'm waiting on them. They'll be here in the next day or two, and I'll get some rear disc brakes on this thing. But... In the meantime, I've been just really busy with small engine work. Um, I'll show you, you know, well, anyway, been, you know, the grass starts to grow, the weed easers, the weed whackers, weed whippers, they don't whip, they don't whack. The cords, kapow. Lawn mowers, the springs and the cords, kapow. Water in the, you know. So anyway, um, and in the meantime, you know, <laughs> I have to mow my own grass and so forth. So anyway, it's a uh, shut up. He's been he's been a handful lately. When I'm out here, you know, like that, and, and of course he never speaks until people leave, until there's nobody here and he knows it. Then he just lets off at me. Man. But I can't remember which bit though it was, but here recently um, I was talking of, oh yeah, it was, I think it was in the last video. I was telling you I found the bracket finally for my DT40 Suzuki um, 88, I think it is. And uh, hard bracket to find to put electric start. And then of course I needed the flywheel and, but I, I had the bracket and the starter. I didn't have the flywheel, but I found one. But I think I found, I went out to the scrap yard the other day, to the heap. I went to the heap. And uh, lo and behold, beneath to me, where I dumped my old carcass outboards and such, somebody dumped one there. And I think, looking back on it, over the years, I think this is the hardest starter bracket to come by for an Evan Rue Johnson, anyway. I have people email me all the time, commenting all the time, and then I have people even stopping in here um, wanting to know if I can do it. Can you do it? Can you get it? Can you make it? And I'm like, mmm, mmm. Mm -hmm. Because when I get one of these brackets, I don't necessarily like to let it t to go on a stand, you know. Kind of want to keep it for Anyway, this is probably the hardest one I know that it is to come by. Maybe not in your neck of the woods, but in mine. And you say, 
What is it? What is it? I show you. I show you. I barely stand up. That's the other thing. I hurt my back. So if I'm walking like a penguin, like a penguin, before I show you the bracket, there's the Cody Bastro van number two. And the rear end's all in there, and it's as quiet as it can be. Now all i got to do is fix that rear hatch area and everything where they locked themselves out and broke into it and blah, blah, blah. But the rear end's nice and quiet. But here's what's been keeping me tied up, this kind of thing. You know, this kind of thing. That. And that. And that. And anyway, I get them in, I get them out, I get them in, I get them out. Now the bracket. Oh, the mystery bracket. There it is. That's the bracket. I'll get you, uh, let's see, I'll get you right in there, I think. And I'll trim you down. Beep. This is about the hardest. I just threw this cover on here. Um... This is on the Johnson that was in my last video or so that I'm still working on. There it is. That bracket. The bracket starter set up for the 9.9 .9 .9 and the 15 horsepower low profile OMCs. That's the hardest one to come by that I know of. And I went out to the Bone de Batal the other day, getting rid of some scrap and whatnot. And this was laying there. And I saw that. Actually, I saw this. Because this was facing a bunch of junk and everything, so I couldn't see what was there. But when I saw that, I had to slow down and investigate. Because I said, I think I know what that is. There it is. And, uh, yeah, so you take off the starter. And what this is, as far as I can remember, and I'm going to take it off here and we'll, we'll find out. It's the exhaust cover. And that's where the bracket is. All right. I did these two top half-inch bolts. And there's my starter. There's a little starter motor. Ain't it a cutie? Here's your bracket. Now I'm gonna have to... I don't know. Them bottom ones down there are pretty salty. That one came out. <laughs> don't know if I can get them with this. Might be a little. I loosen that one up a little more. I've got the right size, I do believe. So there it is. There's your bracket for your starter for the 9.9 15 horsepower low profile. You can see it's the exhaust cover with a plate, a bracket bossed into it to set the starter. Boom. And bolt your starter in there. And then hook up your electric starter. And though you can do it, 
if I remember right, because I've done a couple of these. It's been a, a long while since I've done one, but um, you can rig it just like any other larger electric start, OMC Johnson, whatever, um, with a solenoid, but you don't have to. Um, yeah, I'm going by memory here, but and you guys can weigh in, but as far as I know, they, these wires just ran straight to it via um, a push-button switch for the positive, and that was it, no solenoid. But that's the bracket, probably the rarest starter bracket to add electric start to an older OMC motor that I know of. And when I get them, I like to hang on to them um, because they're that hard to get. But now I'm working on this Johnson in my last couple videos. Um, the one that had the plastic top carburetor that was cracked and everything. And I, uh, I put an aluminum bodied carburetor on there, got rid of the garbage rater. And, uh, and I was going to take that back off, goop up that um, garbage rater with the plastic top. And I had several people weigh in, and, and a couple of them were heavy hitters. I know you, you guys, probably most of you guys know that follow outboard channels, know Cramden. He worked for OMC for many, many years. Um, and and he, he wrote me a good write-up on it and, and said, you know, you, you could probably maybe do it, putting some goop up on there and everything, but that's not a fix. That, you know, and he said what it is is up under that plastic top, and there is, there's those ridges, those little lips uh, forged in the plastic that, he was like, even if you goop around the edges and stuff, if that, if that's, if those little ridges and everything are allowing air in between the different chambers in there, it probably still ain't gonna run right. And uh, so I decided not to do it. And the reason why is, I don't want somebody to to watch a video like that and then goop a, a garbage raider up and go out there, you know, and and getting, you know, getting a pickle with it. And going, well, uh, Cody Bass guy, he, he, he gooped one up. Well, no, I ain't going to goop one up. So, um, yeah, that might be a, a quick, temporary, you might might get by with it. It might work. It might not. But after reading Cramden's write-up, I was like, yeah, he's right. So, I ain't going to do it. Um, but. This particular outboard, uh, it is not cooling itself, so I'm going to have to drop the lower unit. We'll look at that water pump impeller, and then I'll probably, if that water impeller, water pump impeller comes out looking good, it's off with the head. If it ain't that impeller, then it's the grommets under the power head. And if I have to pull the power head and get at them grommets, I will then consider adding the electric start. If it ends up being the impeller, I won't have to pull the power head and if I don't have to pull the power head um, I probably won't add electric start to this one and the reason why is to get those lower couple of bolts actually these three get them off it's e a lot easier and safer without snapping them off to, you know if you have a power head that's out so um, and this one you know I think I think we said it was a 90 um, it runs good now that I put the aluminum bodied carb on it. So I could do it up with all the bells and whistles, the electric start and whatnot. I 
I don't know. Have to see when I get there. I'll be right back. Now you see all that water running out of this lower? That tells me that that lower drain hole on the other side is plugged up. So I'll have to get that unclogged. But also, these bolts I'm taking out and dropping on the floor have a real good coat of anti-geese on them. So it looks to me like it ain't been that long ago since uh, this lower's been off here. <laughs> it's full of water, that drain hole on here. I'll show it to you in a bit. That is definitely Ooh. There, I can see it. It is definitely plugged. Let me see if I can get it with just a screwdriver, the shift link. Now, if you've never done one of these 15s, 99s, it's going to take a, my 3 8 to get it, I think. Um, there's a 3 8 bolt screw. Once you get the lowers loose, for the center part, it's right there in the forward. You shift the outboard into forward and it'll push it down about a half an inch. And then you can generally get in here with your 3 8 and get that. It, it's slotted for a screw head, but it's, uh, I don't know, most of the time I find I have to do this. And then once I do that, screwdrivers and needle nose, I'll try and grab it if I need to screw it out some more once I get it broke. Now freshwater motors, not so much. You don't have to do this kind of stuff too much. They just come right out. But this is a salty, as all mine are always salties. But, she wasn't peeing right. And I dropped my little spider. They got a little crown wa uh, compression washer, lock washer that goes there. I dropped it down in there. That's no biggie because we're going to be able to turn it upside down for sure. There she comes. salty in there and you can see by looking at that water pickup tube you can see all the salty yummy here all this salt and then it's interesting to find I'll try and get a shot down in there where the water pickup tube goes is plugged with salt. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Hopefully you can. But it's got a big glump of salt right there. Could that be enough to stop it from peeing? Sure. Anything blocking that water pickup too. Well, we're gonna pop that old uh, impeller out of there and 
see what that impeller looks like. Now if you see some smoke wafted by around here, that's because I got my smoker going with some sockeye red salmon in there. And I also got some Monterey Jack cheese and some extra sharp cheddar cheese smoking in there. Yummy. I wish you could smell it. Mm -hmm. It smells good. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. All right, so. What size are we dealing with? Three eighths? Yeah, I'm going to show you something else on here, too. Look at all that salt. Just clumps of it. And it's all packed down in that hole, in that grommet, where the uh, water tube is. So that probably means the whole water tube's full of it. Before I take that water pump housing off, I want to show you. Okay, you got these little holes right here. There's a little hole. And that drains this forward compartment. And it's plugged. And you got to just go in there with wires, come down here with a drill bit and wires, and get it unplugged where this will run out of here. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. See all that water come out of there? Most of it's on the floor in there. So we'll have to unplug it lower. In extreme measures, you can come up about three quarters of an inch to an inch above this hole if you can't get it unplugged and drill another hole. And it'll, it'll drain it out of there enough so it doesn't freeze in there and you get that dreaded northern crack. These water pump bolts also are coated with a good thick coat of anti-geese. So, it ain't been that long since somebody's had this apart. I got to have me a spot of tea. Um, here comes the momentous. Whew. This north, this, this uh, forward compartment, I mean, is just full of compacted salt. Just full of it. It's full of it. You want to see how full? I'm going to dig some of it. I don't think I'll be able to get down to the drain hole. But it is just... And this stuff, sometimes this one ain't too bad. Sometimes this salt will get down in there. I, I think I am down to the drain hole. Sometimes this stuff will get in there and it gets as hard as concrete. And I've seen it split the aluminum in front. All right. Put that over here. I'm going to take this piece of cardboard and lay right here on my stand. And I show you. I show you. Whoa. And now, then I'll flush the rest out with the water. And the hose. See how much? It just plugs that drain hole up. So, I'm going to take my water hose and just gently see if I can.
coming out. Nope. <laughs> that hole is still plugged. And you got to make sure that's open. Um, because in the wintertime, with that thing full of water and it gets down to the freezing, she's going to bust. Yeah, she's plugged in there. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to drill another hole above it to get down in there. Because it ain't coming out. But we'll get it running out of there. I ain't going to spend too much time on this. I just thought maybe I could wiggle this wire. Another thing I do sometimes that works, I'll show you. Sometimes I can take compressed air and shoot up in there. There's no bubbles coming in that water or nothing. So she's plugged pretty good. About an inch above that original factory hole. And see if we can get it to drain that way. Just about an inch above it, right in line with it. There she go. Now she peeing. Yeah. Now let me flush a little water in there. That's a little better. <laughs> Except I don't want it spraying all in the garage, in the shop. So we'll. That's how you do it. And uh, yeah, I can see the original hole down in there. You know, I mean the the passage, but boy, it's plugged thick. So, but now she won't freeze and that secondary hole won't hurt a thing. So, she's unplugged now. And this, like I said, you won't have this problem in a uh, highly unlikely you'd have this problem in a freshwater motor. This is something you see mostly in, in salty engines. Sometimes I can take compressed air and shoot up in there. There's no bubbles coming in that water or nothing. So she's plugged pretty good. I'll have to drill another hole or dig it out. But now, drum roll. We need a drum roll. Let's see what we get. There's the housing. There's my little cup. And there's me. Ah, Drop my little pin, of course. So, at least I think I did. Yeah, I did. But, the heck? Oh, there it is. <laughs> That's how the impeller came out. There's the middle of the impeller. There's the rubber. which goes in there. 
And that's why I am a fan of the plastic, yes, I said plastic, centers. They hold up better than the ones that have the brass, and in this case, it's just a piece of steel. But in my opinion, this is just my opinion, the ones that have the plastic centers, I never find them delaminated like that, where the it comes apart like that. The plastic ones just hold up better, in my opinion. So I think we got this uh, Johnson fitting figured out. A um, lot of salty yuck up in that uh, forward chamber and in and down and beneath the uh, water pump housing itself. And uh, with that delaminated impeller, that's what they do. That's a sign. When you get that, one minute it's peeing halfway de decent and the next minute drip, drip, or it stops all together and then you just see a couple drips. You rev it up sometimes and it'll start peeing again then drip, drip. That's a, a, a sign of, of a spun hub like that inside them impellers. And like I said, I cannot ever remember seeing one of the um, impellers made by Stenz, Mallory, um, aftermarket China, who, you know, who knows makes those, but the ones with the plastic center hubs, I have seen them come in and be completely melted where they've run an impeller so hot or an, an outboard out of water without, without it being able to cool itself. I have seen them come in a few times where the plastic center hub and the impeller and everything is just a blob of melted yuck but I've never seen one coming in and that was plastic, had the plastic nylon, I guess it is, center hub uh, that was delaminated. So I actually prefer um, for my customers and myself, I, I prefer putting the uh, plastic hub ones in them. And, and I tell that to people when they come, you know, some people, are, I want OEM. I, you got it. And, uh, but for me, I don't know, I'll stick with, on this one, I'll stick with the old nylon hubs, just my opinion. Um, I, so once we get the new impeller, I got to go get one out of my conics and all and, uh, get that put in there. We'll button that up, but I want to ponder about what I should do. Um, should I make it a short shaft? I'll have to look. At what I got out here for sale and such and if I've got and I, I think I might have one long shaft out here for sale and if I do I'll probably turn this one into a short shaft um, and if not I'll just keep it a long shaft I guess but uh, this one's probably getting a little bit on the long side I hope I know I'm a day late or two but uh, I hope all you poppers had a wonderful popper day and uh, so hopefully in this video you found a hack you could use I want to thank you for watching Fret wants to thank you for watching and else always that's one more hack from Kodiak thank you for watching more vids are coming on Inside Outboards with your host Cody Bass